I have is for sale. And an incredible thing happened. Um, when I was going through, come on Mario, we're going to go for a ride. When I was um, praying about life, um, I also had another um, conviction. There was a lady who uh, contacted me about the vehicle. And it's an incredible story because uh, she ended up writing me. I mentioned I mentioned my my situation with the RV and how I'm living in it, and I'm going on the road for the Lord and how I have to get rid of my car because uh, I can't tow this one. Well, the lady wrote me back and she shared with me that she too, she was a, a Christian, a single mom. She had a son who was autistic. And um, she really wanted something safe for her son. And I thought, wow, Subaru, this, this is like the perfect, this is like the perfect, perfect car for her son. There's no doubt that this car is, it's, it's going to go for 250,000 miles even, even more. Because that's how these Subarus are designed. So she writes me back, shares with me that powerful testimony. And I told her that I couldn't take any more than uh, $7,500 for the car because I had already been dropping it a lot. But in the course of writing her back, like the Holy Spirit's really been working in me. The Holy Spirit like stopped me in my tracks, actually. And I wrote to her then, but I'll pray about it, but I'll pray about it. And it was the Holy Spirit really telling me, you need to pray about this before you really answer her. Uh, that night, I took my bike and uh, went on the Silver Comet. And in the course of riding my bike, of course, I'm talking to the Lord, uh, uh, to the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying and praying about this woman. And, and I'm asking the Lord, you know, what do you think I should do? And I just felt so convicted then. Just so, in the course of that ride, it just started flooding in. The the things that people have done for me, the people that God has brought into my life, the way that the Lord has taken care of me. And it's not that I haven't ever given back. I mean, because that's what that's what we do as believers. We we continually give. We give, we give. It's a, it's the continuum. We're so interwoven together. But but in this case, this was a really big item. <laughs> this was my car. This was my car and I just felt the Holy Spirit say, you know what? You really need to sacrifice this. Here is a sister in need, and I need you to give her the car for what she can afford, which is $5. I excitedly I got up in the morning, started doing my reading, and the first thing I wanted to do was write the woman and tell her what had happened. And I started writing, and you know, in the in the message, I started talking about, you know, we got to give even when it hurts because, you know, that's what the Lord is calling us to do. And then I got distracted. It was almost as if the Holy Spirit was purposely distracting me in the middle of my worship and in the middle of me writing that message. I stepped away from the message and I came back. And instead of going back to the message, the Holy Spirit's like, go go to scripture. You need to go to scripture. I want you to read God's word. And he just told me, like, where to go. You know, it just kind of, it just, this is how it happens. He told me where to go, and I opened it, and it was a story about Paul, and the thorn in Paul's side. Now, a lot of people uh, think that the thorn in his side was, you know, it, it was an affliction, that uh, he was being punished, or it was, but you know, the, the bottom line is that thorn in his side was there to make sure that he didn't become too boastful or too conceited because he was receiving so much revelation from the Lord and the Lord allowed Satan to put that thorn in his side uh, so that he wouldn't get all puffed up. And I read that and it immediately stopped me in my tracks because what that did was convict me again because that message that I was writing was kind of puffing me up a little bit. You know, I admit, it was puffing me up. We all, we all do it, right? And it stopped me in my tracks. And I actually then erased what I wrote to rewrite uh, another message to her. And when I wrote it, this time I told her exactly what the Lord had spoke to me. The bottom line is, the Lord did convict me to sell you the car for 5000 
and that's what I'm going to offer it to you for. So you pray, you pray about that. Well, to make a long story short, we're supposed to, you know, she, she contacted me and, she, and it was kind of last minute that I got her message and I, she said, could you come on Friday and, and, or Thursday and I was busy and, I, and now today's Saturday. In the interim, I will just be honest with you, and this was, you know, again, my flesh. I kept thinking about this car and the value of the car. How we drove across the United States, that this car would probably last me for the rest of my life. And if I ever do um, get a homestead, this car is going to be very valuable to me. And I am selling it at a great loss. You know, I started, you know, here's my flesh. I'm thinking about all these things and, you know, how, man, maybe I was too hasty in even putting the for sale sign up, up on it. But then I told the Lord, you know what? I promised you, God, that I would sell this lady the car for $5,000. And if it's a blessing, help me deny my flesh. I'm going to do what is right. You know, and, and this is the thing, friends. You know, uh, when the Lord convicts us to do something, sometimes it's hard. And with me, even. I, I mean, I'm not an angel. I'm not perfect. Of course, you know, I have those thoughts like, man, you know, I should have not even put the first sale sign up and what am I doing but I also recognize the 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 purpose of helping a sister in need and that that really was important for me well this morning um, I texted her right away and I said I'm sorry I missed your message yesterday but I can meet today I'm going to town I'm going to Home Depot and she wrote back and she said I'm going to, to keep looking I want a vehicle that is mechanically sound and I thought that that was the case with this one. It seems to have some items that will be costly to repair after I spend all the money I have saved. I wish you full restoration of health and healing. Thank you for spreading God's word and being faithful to his call. It's like the blessing was just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on on her end, but that was going to be a real blessing for her son. And it's too bad that she couldn't see the manifestation of what was going on spiritually on this side. Because this car could have blessed her son. And and what needs to be fixed on it is a sensor. And I even talked to my brother and he's like, you can, you can do that, YouTube it. He's like, it's not going to cost hardly anything. And doesn't trust the Lord. I don't know. But do you, do you see sometimes when things just don't work out? You know, um, even when you want to try to bless somebody, uh, it ha this is what happens. So uh, it's sad and it's disappointing. And I still pray that she will find that mechanically sound car. And I really pray that her her flesh doesn't get in the way with what she has money wise. Because I have a funny feeling that 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 really may have superseded um, her trust in God, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Things were aligning. They seemed they were aligning, but only God knows, and it's okay. But I did do what the Lord convicted me to do, and now everything that we do will be, you know, planned out and navigated by Him, him even when um, there's like a little test, like, will you really give her the car? That's a test. Will you pass that test? Keep your Jesus glasses on. It's amazing what you'll see. Look at this little dog. I'll take him to the park today. All right, I love you guys. Uh, God bless you.